Okay, welcome everyone again. We're part two, doing a beautiful winter scene. Um, we're now we've got our sketch completed. We did a nice job here. We um, got in our main details of the of the sketch, and then we also said that we added in some uh, minor details. Let's say uh, that might help us when we're going in and doing our painting. So. Here we have like a creek in the in the foreground. So we have the creek uh, and then the uh, edge of the ground as it slopes down this way. So that's another thing we can do. We could put lines, directional lines that kind of help us to maybe help us with the brush strokes when we're doing our brush strokes to kind of remember that the land is kind of, you know, uh, it's a hill going down to a creek uh, by the front of this house. And then here's our little creek uh, bed right here with water in it. So we said we put in some lines here to just remember to have the uh, shadow area of the ground above the creek. So when we draw those light sketch marks, that helps us when we go in and start painting. Um, we also did some reflections in the water where the trees are up above. Now in reality, the shadow probably would not reach down onto this water but again we stretch truth we stretch the um, realism of this painting and we say well how can we make this painting more exciting well if we were out here painting in a real life situation or even working from a photograph and we didn't see these trees in the water in this creek here we might want to put them in there so we'd ask ourselves the question hey maybe I'd like to put some you know uh, squiggly lines to represent the, the tree shadows in this water even if in reality it's not there because it'll give it more of an interesting look and kind of describe this area as the creek a little more make it more believable that this is a little bit of water here in this area so again um, you're an, you're the artist and you can take liberties when you're doing your artwork to enhance things to make things better to make things more exciting more dynamic so let's get right into it here. We're going to take our um, our square brush. I'll use a square brush for the washes. And this is going to be a simple wash. This is going to be the main first wash. It's going to be light colors. Uh, we're not going to use any dark, uh, uh, dark paints here or darker tonal values. We're going to stick with a nice light first wash. And we're going to sort of give it a nice like uh, winter sky, like a yellow gold color with some uh, maybe some bluish gray clouds um, so what I'd like to do is I'll take my palette and I'll try to mix up uh, with my palette here so that you can kind of see see what I'm going to do when, when I mix the colors here so I'm going to take some uh, cadmium yellow lemon get a nice uh, bit of water going there with some cadmium yellow lemon um, maybe a touch of just cadmium yellow then over here cadmium yellow maybe a touch of cadmium orange so we'll grab some of the, the yellows here we're going to use those for the sky color and we'll just bring that sky color right down into the foreground so that the whole page essentially the whole painting we're going to have this light wash of yellows and golds oranges and with watercolors you'll notice when you paint for a while and you start to get used to the watercolor medium you'll notice that paint you know usually it dries lighter once you put it onto the paper and then it dries the paper dries you'll notice that the paint dries a lot lighter so here in reality we try to paint put the paint and water mixture a little bit more colorful knowing that it's going to dry lighter so we got our orange and our yellow and then over here we'll put some cerulean blue we're gonna have some cerulean blue on the top of the sky toward the very top maybe a touch of cobalt blue in there too all right, so those are our three sky colors and the snow in the foreground at the bottom of the painting is going to be a lot of this too, the blues, the uh, cobalt blue and cerulean blue. 
All right, so we got our three main colors we're going to use for the first wash. Cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow lemon, cadmium orange, cerulean blue, and that's all you need. And we're just going to go right down the painting, and what I'm going to do is basically, I'm going to use a lot of, a lot of the lemon, cadmium yellow lemon and uh, cadmium yellow. Okay, no need to get too uh, careful about this. We're just going to get that cadmium yellow lemon all the way across the painting first. That'll be our f like our really our first goal here is to get that cadmium lemon yellow across the whole paper. No need to flood the paper too much, but you know get the get it on there, get the color on there, the first wash, and that should suffice to be fine. Okay, so you see it's a very simple process, just a nice, you know, cover the cover the paper completely with the cadmium yellow lemon, cadmium yellow. Then we take a touch of the orange and we just kind of here and there put in some orange, some cadmium orange. In the water area here, we'll put a little bit of that cadmium orange too. And that should be good. And for our final bit of color, we're going to add a little bit of the cerulean blue to the top of the sky. Quickly, not too much. You have to just do this one quickly. We don't want to turn it green. It'll tend to look too green if you keep mixing it over and over. So just do the cadmium blue quick. I mean the uh, cerulean blue quick at the top of the sky and then just leave it and then we can also put a little bit of cat oh, cerulean blue in the in the bottom too here by the water so that's really the, the the wash here the essential first wash cadmium yellow lemon cadmium yellow first across the whole page the whole picture um, and then touch in the, the cerulean blue at the top and at the bottom here and there. And you could even do some cerulean blue there. The key though here is to put the cerulean blue on just quickly, a couple strokes, and then let it be. Because too much mixing, it'll turn too green. So we want to try to keep that cerulean blue um, effect without make, turning it too much green. So the less we mix that blue on the paper, the better off we are. So if we just touch in that cerulean blue we're, we're good to go and another thing that might help is if we keep keep a little bit less yellow in this top of this would be helpful I don't I don't think I did that so much but we could wet the paper on the top but not put as much yellow across the top here then start doing the yellow in here all the way across maybe a little bit of yellow up and top and bottom but if you use a little less cadmium yellow and cadmium lemon yellow on the top section here, then when you go in with your cerulean blue, you won't get too much of that greening kind of look, that a greenish look. So that'll help too. And then the same thing down here, you can add maybe a little less uh, yellow in the bottom of your painting when you're going in to do that blue snow color. So this is all going to be snow color. So we're going to go over this with a blue uh, over here. So this is going to dry a lot lighter, so let's not worry about it. Perfect time for a break. Again, take lots of breaks, and this is a perfect natural break you'll just have with watercolors, especially when you're doing the glazing techniques. You know, you put in your um, first wash, and then you just let it go, and you walk away for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. You could even let it go a couple hours if you want. But uh, 15, 20 minutes at least, let the paper dry and become flat again, because it's going to buckle now that there's water on it. Once it's going back to its flat state, the paper, then you go back in and we start our second glazing. Okay, so let's come back in part three to do our um, next wash of colors, the uh, darker tonal values, and that'll start to develop the feel for the painting. So right now we are set for our first wash, and then we're going to let this dry, take a break, have some uh, 
some coffee, some tea, relax, maybe have something to eat, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, start our next glazing. Okay, we'll see you in just a minute.